Welcome back to another Long Range Only review. I'm Justin Iyer and today we're going to be taking a look at the Christensen Arms Mesa Long Range. A lot of you may have seen our video from about a year ago when Jeff took it out to a mile. He sent it to me. I've completed about a year's worth of field testing and I'm going to report back what I found. Stick around. Let's start with the business end of the rifle. Right out on the very front you can see the side discharge muzzle brake. This is made from stainless steel and it's very effective at reducing recoil as well as muzzle jump. It's threaded on with 5 8 24 threads. If you ever need to take it off you can do it, but it does look seamless. It looks as if it's been machined right into the existing barrel. They've done a very good job with the machine work there. The barrel itself is 416R stainless steel. This one has a 1 in 10 inch twist which worked well to stabilize everything I shot in it up to the 215 grain burgers. It's a medium palma contour which adds a little weight and rigidity and really helps it shoot well. And it's 26 inches long. It's free floated in the stock all the way back to where the main barrel shank starts. And it cleaned up very easy. After 150 rounds I decided to run some Bortec Eliminator through it. It did not take very many patches before those quit showing any signs of copper and came out squeaky clean and the barrel shot great immediately after cleaning. Really impressed with this barrel and the accuracy that it's provided. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on in the review. Let's take a look at the action real quick. This is a Christensen Arms action. It works with any Model 700 aftermarket accessory. It comes with a Trigger Tech primary trigger. Mine breaks crisp as can be at two pounds, it's great. It has a 3.7 inch mag box. With these 215 grain burger hand loads, I'm 3.64 inches and I believe I'm 20 thou off the land, so it's got plenty of room to run what I need it to. You have skeletonized bolt handles, fluted bolt handle as well as the actual fluted bolt. There are twin ejector plungers up in front as well as an M16 style extractor. And on the back side there's a side bolt release. These are features that just 10 years ago, everyone would buy a Remington 700 and spend three to $400 to get a lot of these upgrades done. And you get this right from the factory with this Mesa long range action. Now we'll take a look at the stock. Obviously those of you that shoot quite a lot know that the stock is very critical. Proper fit with a rifle will really enhance your experience and increase your ability to shoot accurately. Starting off with the recoil pad, it has a fairly thin recoil pad, but it's soft. You combine that recoil pad with the muzzle brake, it made shooting this very pleasant. Moving forward just a little bit, you get to the adjustable cheek piece. This is a modular design. You take two screws off the top of the comb, you're able to remove it, and then you can add additional black plastic spacers in there. The rifle only ships with one spacer. If you'd like additional height, you need to buy extras from Christensen Arms. I really wish they would have sent two or three just to help create a better fit for those individuals, but one got it high enough that most shooters were fine with that. I prefer a little bit higher comb, so I added a Velcro cheek piece over the top of it. Just one of those little soft cheek pieces that you see, and that got my eye to exactly the height I needed, and I quite enjoyed it at that height. Moving forward again, we come to the vertical pistol grip. New shooters especially found this grip very comfortable. If they're coming from a classic, you know, standard rifle stock, to all of a sudden getting that vertical grip it feels really nice when they lay down behind the rifle it does have a palm swell i wish that palm swell was a little bit bigger like some of my other stocks but it actually fit really nice it was never a hindrance and the new shooters really liked it moving forward again we come up to the flat fore end this is very comfortable to shoot offhand if you want to even though the rifle's heavy it is manageable and it just fits your hand nice it also rides bags really well at the range there were two swivel studs up front that we swapped out for a short Picatinny rail section so that we could do quick detach bipods and that worked out really easy. The fit and finish of the stock is good. Here you can see the bottom metal fit. It was very tight. Looks good. Obviously we would mentioned earlier the barrels free floated. It is spot bedded at the recoil lug. Nothing fancy there but they've done that and there are pillars installed as well. The rifle obviously looks and feels good, but how does it shoot? That's the question everyone wants to know. Christensen Arms guarantees these rifles to one MOA accuracy or better, and it easily lived up to that expectation. 
I took one shot after I had received the rifle to get it bore sighted with a PST2 scope and then shot this three shot group with Sig Sauer factory match ammo. I then made another zero adjustment and shot this five shot group and I don't remember which one was the flyer but it made me cry because four shots going into that tiny little hole and then to ruin a group with a fifth one like that was a real heartbreaker. But this is the type of accuracy I continued to see. Those of you that know me on social media have known that for the last few months I've just been really struggling to keep my groups up to par on paper at 100 yards. And regardless of how poorly I was shooting my other rifles, this one would just shoot a minute. And oftentimes much better than that. Here we've got a group that one of my friends shot. It was his first time behind the rifle. He was a self-proclaimed shotgun shooter, didn't know what he was doing with the rifle, and proceeded to shoot a half-minute three-shot group at 300 yards. This was the type of accuracy I honestly expected to see, and I got it. It was just phenomenal results with factory ammo and a factory rifle. I couldn't have asked for more. When I began hand-loading for this, I threw some 215 burgers and some ADG brass. I believe I seated them 20 thou off the lands. Then I tried H1000 Reloader 26. H1000 was shooting right around a minute. Reloader 26 with this particular jump was shooting closer to a half. So since I had some extra Reloader 26 on the shelf, that's what I ran through most of my field testing. I took that load out to 1,250 yards, shot in some real tough conditions, and was still able to make an Im a couple impacts on a 12-inch plate. I spent most of my time with this rifle 600 yards and in, and it just hammered. It was a lot of fun to let new shooters get behind this rifle and just see their faces light up as the steel rang. Let's talk about the field review portion of this rifle now. I've dragged this around for about 10 months in all sorts of various conditions. It's been through a winter, a spring, and a summer. I've had it rained on, I've had it snowed on, I've had it dusty, and it just functions like it should every time. The trigger never gummed up, the action still runs smooth, and it's just an easy rifle to get to love. One of my favorite parts about the review of this rifle is I really tried to let other people get behind the rifle, especially newer shooters. Shortly after I received this rifle, I had a father and a son combo run into me at the range. The two boys were 10 and 15. They showed a lot of interest in the rifle. The 10 year old especially, you know, wanted to shoot it. I let him lay down behind it. He couldn't have been a whole lot more than 100 pounds and he absorbed that recoil just fine with the muzzle brake and either went two for two or three for three on our 600 yard plate. It was pretty impressive to watch. It was something I think the dad was having a hard time believing that his son was able to do that so easily. And both the dad and the other son were able to get behind it and make hits as well. I also took out a co-worker who claims to be more of a shotgun shooter and that he didn't know what he was doing with a rifle. And he put down a three shot group under half minute of angle at 300 yards his first time behind this rifle. It just makes shooting easy. Everyone that's got behind it asks how much it costs and if I'm willing to sell it. I think that's pretty good testament to Christensen did exactly what they were looking to do. They made an affordable rifle that was easy to get behind, comfortable to shoot, and gets people excited to get into long range. As we've gone through the features of the rifle as well as talked about its accuracy potential, I think you can see this is a heck of a good buy for someone looking to get a long range rifle on a budget. For $1,600 it's going to be very tough to beat. You get the vertical grip stock, you get a great trigger with the trigger tech, you get custom action features that you used to have to pay four or five hundred dollars to upgrade to. You get all that for sixteen hundred dollars out the door ready to go shoot. If you have any questions on this rifle go ahead and reach out to us on the forum at longrangeonly.com. Also you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Hope to see you around. Thanks for watching.